Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to another edition of TNA the Throwback Series from 2006. As always, we're looking to head on towards Destination X and hopefully put on a, another stellar show for you. Just before we crack on to that, as I say as always, thank you for watching, it's much appreciated. And as always, any comments, likes, shares, subscriptions, all that jazz are deeply appreciated. As always, please back down in the comments section. Let me know how you're feeling with, with um, TW in general. Have you went out yourself and bought the likes of a world of mixed martial arts? Let me know how your saves are getting on. As I say, it's not just about this save in general, it's about everybody's saves. So let me know, even if you took a save in 2006, who have you booked? Let me know. But back to business here. As I say, we are roughly eight days away from the pay-per-view. So we need to get that card put together. And it's another sold-out crowd in the Fort Lauderdale Lake Centre, if we've got that right. So we start off with an extremely short match. Raven defeats Eric Young in 352 by pinfall. Got the show off to a strong start and they got the crowd hotter. Raven were 48 to the ending performance of Eric Young as a 34. A D47. But its main aim, if I'm honest, is really just ensuring that, as I say, Raven gets more momentum going forward. So it's done its job there. Raven then picks up the victory quite easily over Eric Young. He stands up and he poses to the crowd. In the background, we've got two men with hoodies who have jumped into the ring and start a beatdown on Eric Young. Listen, writes, they then stand up and they look at Raven, they drop their hoods, and it's Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas. What do they want in that E28 segment, that mugging of Eric Young? Raven then takes a microphone with these men in the ring and decides to say, Christian Cage, Sting. You fought odd when I had the monster of mist beside me, but I continue to evolve, I continue to get stronger, and I know that with the numbers game, I will have the advantage that will get me the TNA or the NWA TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I bring you my two new disciples, I bring you Douglas and Stevens, I bring you the collective force known as Serotonin. So in real life this consisted of Raven Kazarian, and I can't remember the names for, I believe it was Johnny Devine and Matt Bentley or Michael Shane. I can't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, my wrestling knowledge of that time scale is not great. As I say, that was just, I was starting to get back into wrestling. But I like to name it, and as I say, if it helps Raven, all the better. So, crowd got hotter from that. Good promo from Raven. Next up, we've got some more Joe who is heading to the ring for his upcoming match. He bumps into the general manager. Oh, sorry, basically he bumps into Eric Bischoff. I made a typo there. Bischoff says, Joe, good luck tonight in your match with Jay Lethal. I'm just off the phone to your opponent for Destination X, and they've said to wish you the best of luck, and that they will be watching. So, C-56, their opponent won't participate until we get to the, the pay-per-view, so overall it's going to be really interesting to see who takes on some more Joe. Joe's match itself was decent. He wins in 7.02 with a Kahuna Clutch, making the 6th defence of the TNA X Division Championship. Much better performance than Jay Lethal, but I believe Lethal will be one of those ones that will take a, a bit of time to get him over, but H is on his side, and eventually he will get there, and he will be the main man. So overall, pretty good there. And yeah, C minus 55 is decent. Just builds up some more Joe's momentum as well. Next up, we had our matchup containing the female athletes on the show, the knockouts. So I say we still require a, an amount of attractive women on the show here. So, and about they had a decent reaction from the crowd. But subpar wrestling, the team of Gail Kim, Lisa Moretti, and Sarah Del Rey defeated Jacqueline Moore, Kana, and ODB in 9.20 when Sarah Del Rey defeated Jackie with by pinfall. So D45, I see a lot of the ladies are still in their initial stages, so it is going to take a, a bit of time to get them fully over to where we want them to be. But yeah, as I say, we'll keep them facing each other, we'll bring a bit more depth to the division, and then we'll seek to bring in championship belt. 
Next up with a recent matchup that saw the team of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels defeat America's Most Wanted in 14-16 when AJ Styles defeated James Storm with a double underhooked faceplant or the Styles Clash. C62 is pretty good there, again continuing the momentum of Daniels and Styles. Good matchup here, serves its purpose well and just a few negatives there for chemistry. Chris Harris debuted the new spot that has great heel heat. His psychology is good, so that's brilliant. That will help in the future. AJ picks up the win, but after the matchup, we also have LAX jump in with America's Most Wanted for a 4 on 2 beatdown on the Phenomenal One and Christopher Daniels. Is this some sort of alliance being formed by the two tag teams? They got a D47 anyway, and the LAX reformation storyline continued a little bit. They have a promo with P.T. Williams. He says, Tonight I'm going to show the world that they are sleeping on P.T. Williams. I'm fed up of this Brian Danielson hype. I'm one of the TNA mainstays. I am a world-class athlete and I am goddamn better than Brian Danielson. Watch me prove it. So that got a D42. So Pete's a bit pissed off, you know, all this hype going to Brian Danielson since he debuted in TNA and he believes the hype should be on him. Match itself was decent. Danielson picks up the win in 945, remaining unbeaten with a full Nelson suplex. A C64 is a good match there. Danielson, probably one of the best performers on the show, and he keeps up his great momentum. And next up, our co main event, a decent matchup. Sees a best defeat, uh, sorry, our main event, sorry, sees a best defeat Rhino in 10 minutes and 12 by pinfall, a D plus 52. Overall, just building up a bit more dominance for Abyss, beating Rhino, who obviously is a former number one contender for the championship. So it's really worrying times here for, as I say, people associated with uh, against Abyss, because obviously he's aligned with Raven, you know, so he's always going to be a threat. And we end the show with a Christian promo. Him and Sting are backstage, and they say, Raven, Abyss... We spoke to General Manager Eric Bischoff, and he's informed us of a blockbuster main event for next week on Impact. You've got four guys, so next week it's going to be a four-on-four -four match heading into Destination X. That's, and then Sting says, that's right boys, it'll be Raven, Abyss, Stevens and Douglas against Christian, myself, and two mystery partners next week it's showtime so looking forward to that big match up as i say it's likely as i say to be christian against raven probably going to go sting abyss and have a few other matches at destination x uh, around the cards module mystery opponent and i say we'll build a lot more up next week but as i say it's a good ending to the show there that hopefully gives us that good rating overall c60 that'll do the job and that increases our popularity in 11 regions, which basically, at this stage, we're kind of looking for just to help the company grow week after week. Get a few people feuding there. Let's have a look. Matt Seidel. Cool, cool, cool. A 0 0.15 TV rating, and Bob Armstrong doesn't like Pete Williams. Interesting. Uh, we need to really find something for Jeff Hardy, it's been too long, so expect something for Jeff next week. But in terms of getting to Cult, as I say, we're just building up the southeast. that's why we keep working in the Florida region, and then we'll eventually move our way across to getting the mid-south up and going from there. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. As I say, slow but surely getting to Destination X, but as I say, hopefully next week we'll give you a full card rundown. Uh, and then we can carry on with a good pay-per-view. So, thanks for watching. Um, just going to confirm one other thing, because in case you think it's a spoiler, Funaki's not fighting some module. We are signing Funaki, because I thought that'd be something good for the X Division to help put people over, but it's not Funaki. So I can confirm that. So any other guesses for who you think that could be, let me know. But as always, thanks for watching. Comments, likes, shares, etc. are always deeply appreciated. You can... Uh, Follow me as well on Twitter at 21 Maxwell. Uh, if you follow, I'll follow back. You know, I mean, I don't mind doing that. 
share some guys or screen caps, whatever over that, I don't mind. And yeah, take it easy. See you next time for the Go Home Show for Destination X. Bye-bye.